Hello and welcome to this week's cake tutorial. I'm going to be sharing how I created this buttercream straw effect hat using just one piping tip plus how to make these lovely wafer paper flowers to finish it off. I'm starting off with two 6 inch cakes but I'm only going to level off one of them as I'm going to use the other one to help carve the top of the hat. I'm popping this onto a 12 inch cake board so it gives me enough room to keep the hat brim in proportion with the cake. Make sure the cake is positioned right in the middle and then fill with buttercream and top off with the other cake layer. Using a small serrated knife, I'm going to begin shaping my cake by carving the side following the dome. As you can see, I'm not really removing too much cake, I'm just taking off enough to round it out. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to remove the rest of the caramelisation from the sides and the top of the cake and then give it a crumb coat in buttercream. This just helps trap all those crumbs to the side of the cake and gives a great base for the fondant or buttercream decoration. As this is a carved cake, it can be quite tricky to smooth off that top curve. So I have these flexible smoothers that I use for fondant and just bend them in my hand and try to match the shape of the cake. And as I would with a side scraper, just lightly run it around the top while rotating the cake with the other hand. This is now going to go in the fridge to harden up, and while it's chilling, I can make the wafer paper flowers. So I'm going to begin with the sunflower, and for this you'll need a foam mat, some wafer paper, some petal templates, a large and small one which I've just freehanded myself, some brown fondant, some scissors, a brush, a leaf tool, a ball tool, and some water. For the centre of the flower, I'm going to take some brown fondant, roll it into a ball and then squash it slightly on my mat. Taking the ball tool, flatten out a circle in the middle and then using the leaf tool, stipple around the outside to add a bit of texture. That can be placed to one side for now while I show you how I make the petals. To colour my wafer paper, I used an airbrush, but if you don't have one, don't worry. You could just mix some food colour with water and brush it on or use petal dust to colour the sheet once it's made. The airbrush adds some moisture to the wafer paper, which is what we need to make it more pliable. If you're brushing with water, you might have to let it dry out a bit before using. You could also use something like a garment steamer or even boiling water from a kettle to dampen it, but just be really careful of your hands if you're holding the paper over the steam. So I'm just going to cut some strips just big enough so that I can put my template on top and cut out the petal. You can cut a few at a time to speed things up, but I do find that anything over three and it gets harder to cut out a really smooth, even shape. Once you've done your larger petals, which you'll need about 32 of, move on to the smaller petals and make around 14 of these. Pop your larger petals onto a foam mat and then using the leaf tool, gently run it down the centre. You don't have to add too much pressure, but they do still need to be slightly damp, otherwise they will crack and break. Now we have all our pieces, it's time for assembly. I've used some of my leftover wafer paper and mixed this into my water to create a kind of glue, and I'm going to brush a little on the back of my fondant middle. Taking the petals, I'm going to stick them to my fondant using just the very end. Remember, you're working upside down, so make sure that the shiny side is pointing down. To space my petals evenly, I pop one at 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock and then put three petals in between each gap. Apply more glue when needed. You could just leave the sunflower like this, but if you do want a fuller flower, just build up another layer behind the first one. To attach the smaller petals, I'm just going to pop a little glue on the ends and then push it gently under the fondant. Work your way all the way around and then we have our sunflower. I've also decided to make some white and blue daisies using the same technique as before. This time using a small piece of yellow fondant for the middle and a narrower, smaller petal for the template. As this is so small and fiddly, I find it easier to layer the petals in a circle and then place the centre on the top like so. Lastly, I'm going to make a few leaves, this time colouring my wafer paper green, cutting out a leaf shape and then veining just like the sunflower petals. 
You can also add in some extra detail by adding lines coming from the centre too. Those are all the decorations made, so now it's time to pipe the hat. I've mixed up some straw coloured buttercream using a sugar flare egg yellow, autumn leaf and a little chestnut and I'm using a number 14 piping tip which is a small open star. So let's pop that in the piping bag and begin piping. So looking at my cake you can now see that it has a bit of a straw hue to it in certain places. This is because I've actually already piped this cake before but I had a section about this big and I didn't have enough buttercream for it. So I had to take it all off, mix it up and here we go again. I'm going to begin piping a line of buttercream where the cake meets the board. Don't worry if you can't do this all in one go, just stop, readjust and then carry on. It does get easier as you go. Next, I'm going to pipe just above that line but in a bit of an X shape but with each crossover just slightly below like so. Keep working all the way around until you get back to the beginning. I'm then just going to repeat this pattern of line and crossover all the way onto the top and into the middle. To attach my wafer paper flowers, I'm just using a little buttercream on the back. You may want to chill your cake first as you don't want to ruin all that hard work. Just arrange your flowers on one side of the hat until you're happy with the overall look. And there we go! There's only one thing left to do and that is to cut it open. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have many more on my channel as well as recipes plus tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.